Welcome to the Computer Technology Presentation on Multimodal Biometric Systems. I'm Sussi Sharma and I'm doing BTEC in Computer Systems and Networking. A little overview and what we're going to talk about in this presentation. We'll start with a small recap on Multimodal Biometric Systems where we'll discuss about what it is, how is it different from traditional biometric system and what issues does it address. Next we'll talk about the progress made, what we've achieved so far including what was done last year. Changes made is another big topic of discussion where we talk about changes in the overall approach, new equipment that will be used and a revised topology. The next heading processing for authentication, enrollment and verification provides a high level description of how I plan on making this project work. The final topic, plans for this semester include a Gantt chart that describes the tasks and deadlines I need to meet in order to successfully develop this project. What is a multimodal biometric system? A multimodal biometric system is an authentication system that utilizes more than one biometric trait, physical or behavioral, to authenticate a user. How does it differ from unimodal or traditional biometric system? The tra traditional biometric system only utilizes one biometric trait and is usually subject to more than one kind of issue, which we'll talk about next. Uh, problems with unimodal biometric system and how multimodal biometric systems address the limitation of unimodal biometric systems include uh, as per the paper multimodal biometric system by Prasad and Subaru Yudu unimodal biometric system has open quote inherent problems such as noisy sensor data non-universality of a biometric trait restricted degrees of freedom and an accepted error rate close quote therefore adding biometric traits can address the issue of a unimodal biometric system by providing multiple evidences to prove the legitimacy of the user accessing the system. Providing multiple pieces of evidences can be useful in consolidating security attributes such as non-repudiation as the legitimacy of the evidences supplied cannot be falsified. This ensures accuracy of identification and dramatically increases the difficulty in spoofing the system with an addition of every new biometric trait. It also offers the users to identify themselves using more than one biometric trait. For example, a user limited to authentication by ECG due to a pre-existing heart condition such as arrhythmia could choose to authenticate a system using fingerprint or iris scanning or a combination of both. Essentially, any biometric trait that may not hinder the user from accessing the system. Here's a pictorial juxtaposition of the two discussed modes of biometric authentication. On the left, we have a biometric system taking one biometric trait, which is processed to ultimately create a unique biometric ID. And on the right, we have a biometric system taking more than one, in this case, two biometric traits to create a unique biometric ID. Progress made so far. The plan is to use a fingerprint scanner and a camera for facial recognition to feed in the inputs. The designated inputs for fingerprint scanner is obviously fingerprint and the camera will take a close-up shot of a person which will ultimately get sent to a server to be processed and identified further. The plan is discussed in greater detail in the coming slides but this slide will give us a small insight of what needs to be done and how far we are from the finish line. So far we have successfully been able to scan and identify fingerprints from the scanner. The Omega 2 Plus is able to capture relatively decent pictures which is comprehensible by the remote server. The facial recognition software is also able to correctly identify and recognize faces. This year, a couple of changes were made to the project, mainly in terms of the approach, equipment and topology. The main changes in the approach include uh, changes in the biometric vectors. This year, instead of ACG, the project will be utilizing facial recognition as one of the biometric vectors for identification and verification. The reasons behind making the changes include cost. This factor associates closely to the third factor, that is the accuracy of data. This is because for ECG, in order to obtain the level of accuracy from a data to be able to correctly identify a unique beat pattern, more electrodes have to be purchased to increase the sensitivity of the input. More electrodes mean higher cost. User friendliness. The increase in electrodes in an attempt to increase the sensitivity of the reading also reduces the user friendliness as electrodes have to be placed at multiple points around the body. 
accuracy of data. As mentioned earlier, more electrodes would be required to increase the sensitivity of the readings. Therefore, if we were to accommodate for the cost and user friendliness, the data obtained would not suffice to make up for an accurate reading in order to derive uniqueness from it. As for the changes we have made in the equipment, we have decided to stick with the Omega 2 Plus, but use an Arduino dock instead for the following set of reasons. It has got compatible source code for the Atmel Atmega 328P microcontroller for the Arduino dock. The capabilities of the Omega and Arduino dock can be brought together. The, the tremendous amount of libraries, documentation and readily available code for Arduino on GitHub reduces the development time and debugging. Changes made in the topology. The plan is to use an Ubuntu virtual machine on my PC as a server combined with the OpenWRT and the Omega 2 Plus which is an embedded operating system based on Linux. The fingerprint authentication is done locally on the Omega 2 Plus and facial recognition and processing in the virtual machine. Scripting and process control can be used on both ends for a strong cohesion of Arduino code uh, and Linux image capture commands on the Omega. The reasons behind these changes include compatibility between Linux kernels, which aids in streamlining processes between the client and the server. This also simplifies networking issues to transfer file by simply using rsync to push and pull files to and from a server. Processing remotely to, by harnessing Linux's power on a relatively powerful hardware might be an efficient way of processing images for facial recognition rather than conducting facial recognition locally. A personal factor behind choosing Linux also happens to be because of the ease of use and its large repository. Linux also has a large community, therefore the project can be scale, scaled and improved upon in the future. Here is an illustration that gives us the gist of the topology and something we'll come back to. The processing for the following include two phases, enrollment and identification phase. The enrollment phase involves registering fingerprint locally capturing a close-up shot and sending over the captured image to the server. The identification phase occurs in two stages, one locally also called device or client side, where if an invalid fingerprint has been presented, the authentication fails. This is where the identification phase occurs <clears throat> and if the identification phase fails, the client jumps to low power mode or waits for the next input. If a valid fingerprint has been presented, the client initiates photo capture and proceeds to send it to the server. This is the identification phase two, which occurs on the server side. It also happens after it, ha it happens after the server receives the picture or data from the client. So on the server side, once it receives the data, it determines if the data is valid or not, which in this case is a picture of a person that is to be identified with the data present on the server. Therefore, if the data is invalid, the authentication process fails and the server sends a signal to the client to advise that the verification has failed on phase two and to jump to low power mode. However, if the data presented is valid, the server authorizes access to the device and its services. Plans for this semester and future planning. Here's again chart detailing the events and objectives of the project for this semester. And that is the end of the presentation. Hope you enjoyed the presentation and I shall see you on the next one. Thank you.